The Hanover Marathon was a race that witnessed some phenomenal finishing. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever seen a marathon race this crazy in your entire life? Stay tuned till the end of this video to see just what happened, as you will not believe how hard this race really became for some of these Kenyans and Ethiopians. Yes, that is a couple of guys wearing some American football helmets. I have no idea what they are doing, especially at the front near the elite runners. Don't ask me why they've been allowed that far up the front of the uh, field, but uh, we'll never know. Anyway, this race was underway and as usual we saw the fastest runners head to the front with 3 minutes now being completed. The beginning stages of a marathon are really the boring stages, no one really cares about them because let's be honest, a marathon is over 2 hours long. So the first 3 minutes is about staying calm and just trying to acknowledge that you are there in the lead pack. Now a lot of these pro runners are running at paces that most humans could not even sprint at for more than 20 or 30 seconds. To give you an idea, they are running around about 4 minutes 40 seconds per mile, which would be roughly 34 to 35 seconds per 200 meters. That is very very fast indeed. Here we are, fast forward to 50 minutes in, and we can see that some of the Kenyans are actually struggling with how fast this pace has become. It's always worrying to see people pulling faces like this only 50 minutes into a marathon race. You know that they're really going to end up either dropping out or running extremely slowly for the rest of the way. So my condolences go out to this athlete here who has clearly found himself almost hitting the wall at barely halfway into the race. On top of this I noticed his form was starting to look very stiff and he was in a whole world of pain trying to keep up with this lead pack. If we fast forward another minute we can see that the pack are now moving away from this Kenyan and unfortunately he has nobody to run with which is one of the worst things that can ever happen to you in a marathon race. So let's wait and get the half marathon split. I'm interested to see what the leaders are going to run. Currently they are operating at a pace of around about 2.09 for the marathon distance. This is not very fast at all. However, for this standard of a race, the Hanover Marathon isn't known for being on the same standard as Germany, uh, Berlin Marathon or the London Marathon in Great Britain. So I would highly recommend Hanover Marathon if you are someone looking to get personal records and you live in Germany. It's a very nice and flat course with a lot of trees for good oxygen and air and the support is fantastic. Here you can see the uh, organizers of the race trying to cheer on this Kenyan runner who cannot keep up with these leaders. Unfortunately he has dropped all the way back now and you can see there another Kenyan is starting to drop off. This pace is becoming too fast for a lot of these guys. Here we have a Polish runner called Zost in the middle of this pack. Phenomenal running by Zost. He's doing a really good job at staying relaxed. He's almost made it to the halfway mark and he is still looking pretty relaxed. I mean, he looks much better than half of the Kenyans in this pack in terms of how fatigued his facial expression is and how much he is sweating. Obviously the halfway mark will give us a better indication of how fast they are running. Right now we have some Kenyans running and leading. We have Iri of Ethiopia. We have him at the back here in the blue vest running for Adidas. Right now it was a really really good weather day. We had not too much wind, no rain and fairly dry conditions on the road surface which always helps for the runners to get some decent times. So here we are approaching the halfway mark, the half marathon split, what is it going to be, what do you reckon? I think they are looking at around 64 minutes which would give them a 208 to 209 marathon. Wait until the end of this race as what happens next is genuinely unbelievable. I've never seen a runner of the elite level have to crawl over the finish line in my entire life. Usually it is the slower runners. Runners trying to lose weight or runners running for charity and sponsorships. This is actually unbelievable and it made me really want to feature this race to show just how tough some of the elite runners push their body. Sost of Poland was still there hanging on. He was slowly drifting back however as we saw some surges taking place from a couple of the Adidas runners 
who were actually doing a good job now at increasing the pace. We had Maina in the lead for Kenya, 64 minutes, Kozgai in second, and then we had Zost in fifth. Now, here we have Iri of Ethiopia. He is one to keep your eyes on. He went through in 64.13. So they're currently operating at a pace of around 2.08 for the marathon time. This is very fast, and I believe it will give some of these guys a personal record in this group. Let's wait and see, though, as we are only just over an hour into this race, and anything can really happen. As I fast forward right now, I can see that Zost is starting to show signs of fatigue. His breathing has become a lot heavier and his mouth is opening a lot wider every time the TV cameramen zoom in on his face. I think that he's starting to really hurt now and possibly regretting going out so fast as he could potentially hit the wall way before the finish line. Having said that though, this lead group has actually come together quite nicely. They were strung out before, but now they're very compact, and this is a really good way of running. Any of you who have been runners before, who are watching this video, or maybe you still are runners, you'll know that a good formation is really, really good. It just feels good. There's something you can't really explain it. It's like spiritual when you're all running in a group, and you're, you've got the guys on the front, the sides, the back, and it's really like they are blocking the wind, they are blocking all the negative energy, and you're all working together as one unit. You may be laughing and think that sounds stupid, but there's a reason why Kipchoge does that at Ineos 159 and Breaking 2 Project when he tried to break the two-hour marathon is because it works. Whether it's because of the wind, whether it's because spirituality or there's something to it, the shape and the sym symmetry they are using, it's very interesting to study this. Zost is still there at 1 hour 20. I'll be honest, I thought he was going to drop back by now, but he's doing really well to hang on. He really, really is. This runner is starting to slow down, and I think it's giving Zost an opportunity to stay with these leaders and show him that, you know, Polish runners can also challenge African runners if they train hard enough and become more determined. 1 hour and 20 minutes and 33 seconds on the clock. Ladies and gentlemen, this is shaping up to be a very interesting race. Let's see what we have here. So we're looking at Zoss still on the back right. He's looking good. We've got Eerie next to him on the left of Ethiopia. He will go on to do big things in this race, so make sure you keep an eye on him. We also have a Kenyan at the front. We have Miner also at the front for Kenya. And uh, one of the paces just stepping away there. Now this uh, group has whittled down from around six runners to only five. Is this going to be a bad thing? Not necessarily. There's still a good amount of runners in this lead pack. However, what this now means that is if one of the paces has dropped away, we are now going to see a surge or an aggressive move from some of the other runners. There isn't long left to go, guys. We're almost at an hour and a half. So they have only around 35 to 37 minutes of running remaining, depending on how fast they run the rest of this race. So here we go. Zost is still there of Poland. We have three or four Kenyans, two Ethiopians. It's looking very interesting right now. We have a breakaway from a smaller Kenyan. I believe his name is Koyunga. Uh, Koyaga. Uh, I'm sorry if I pronounced the names wrong. I will show all the names on the finishing results list once this race is over. So uh, we'll get the names properly right then. But this is uh, uh, quite a decisive move. You can tell that he's really challenging these guys because they're stretched out. They're no longer in that position where they were running all together in kind of a compact unison. They're now stretched out and they're running single file. This means that the pace is very fast and they may be struggling just to keep up. Some of the athletes may be worrying at this point, thinking that it's too much and they simply will not be able to keep up. But Sost is still there at 1 hour 25. He's hanging on, but it's about to get a whole lot harder now as some of these Kenyans are getting a bit restless. They're realizing the pace is slowing and there we go. Look at that. Only seven minutes have been and we have seen Sost dropped off of that pack by around about 30 to 50 meters. Now Zost is still looking strong, but the rest of this group have dropped him because they realized that they were slowing too much, so they decided to increase the pace. We had Eerie of Ethiopia who was taking the lead now and trying to really put surges in to drop some of the Kenyans. 
This was Kenya versus Ethiopia and it was really starting to become exciting. 1 hour 34 minutes into the race, the helicopter was showing signs of a breakaway athlete around this part of the city. It was shaping up to be pretty phenomenal as I was wondering just how these athletes were still managing to increase their pace. Right now, I think that Erie was struggling, Erie being the one with the bib on his back falling off. Uh, I think that would be as a result of not safety pinning it on properly, or either that or he's fallen or someone has grabbed the bib uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. But usually athletes would want to put pins in the top and bottom to stop things like this happening because it can happen and it can also affect the aerodynamics. Although they're not sprinting, you know, 5 minutes per mile or 4.40 per mile is still fast. And for 2 hours, that flapping thing on his back is going to annoy him, surely. Right now, we are at 1 hour 35. A bit of a close call there with one of the bikers and the Africans coming over to hug the bend here, trying to run the shortest course of this marathon because they don't want to run more meters than they have to. Here is Kayunga. He is looking strong. One of the shortest marathon runners I've seen, I must say. Don't know his height, but I'd say he looks around 5 foot 3, 5 foot 4 maybe, which is considerably shorter than the average marathoner's height in the elite field of around 5 foot 8 to 5 foot 9. So here we go. It's two Kenyans versus one Ethiopian. One hour and 41 minutes on the clock. Can you tell which athlete is going to be crawling over the finish line? Can you tell? Well, let's wait and see because it's really unexpected and when I watched this, I couldn't quite believe what I was witnessing. There is a pack of three runners now in the lead and they are doing a great job motoring along here. Here we have some cyclists on the right showing them that they can still go, they can still push and they're operating at around about 2.09 predicted finish time at this point in the race. I was wondering whether they were going to slow down and it seemed they did because originally at the halfway mark with the paces they were going to run 208 but they have slowed down a little bit and now they are operating at 209 pace. So I was a little disappointed when I heard this but at the same time when I saw what happened at the end of this race I couldn't believe it. Okay, so let's fast forward to 1 hour and 55 minutes. We've got Erie of Ethiopia making his move in this blue Adidas vest. He has really made an aggressive move. I tell you what, guys, from the side, Erie looks like um, he looks like uh, the runner who won Adola. He looks like the guy Adola. That's it from uh, the Berlin Marathon a few years back. Uh, I don't know what it is about him, but he reminds me of Guy Adola of Ethiopia as well. So here we go, we've got Erie of Ethiopia, 1 hour and 56 minutes into this race. He hasn't got long left guys, do you reckon it's going to be him crawling over the line? Do you reckon it's going to be one of the runners in 2nd or 3rd? Is it going to be an Ethiopian or a Kenyan that crawls over the finish line? Right now it's hard to tell because although they're running very hard and they're operating at their maximum effort, they still look completely in control. This video is going to prove how lethal the marathon can be and how even an elite runner who trains hundreds of miles a week can hit the wall out of nowhere only 100 meters from the finish line. 1 hour 58 minutes on the clock. Here Erie is really pushing hard. At this point I started to think okay maybe Erie's going to hit the wall. He is really grimacing. He's gritting his teeth. He's squinting his eyes. There's sweat pouring from his forehead and he's trying everything he can to hold this lead. He's managed to get a very healthy lead off of second place which to me looks to be around about 40 meters to 50 meters of a gap. This is very, very good running by Erie of Ethiopia, but can he hold on? Because don't forget, he still has over 11 minutes of running left to go. Is he going to stop at a drink station, take on some fluids and possibly some energy? A lot of these drinks are filled with sugars and fructose and glucose, so giving the athletes the sugars they need to boost their body at the latest stages of this marathon race. Two hours is now on the clock. We don't have long left to go. Only around 3k remaining in this race and it's looking really, really tough here. I'm just looking at this thinking how on earth are they going to get the masses through this tiny narrow section? Uh, very narrow. Uh, if anyone's ran Hanover Marathon before, please comment down below your experience and let us know what you think of this course. It looks very good to me. It looks very flat. 
They've got the markers out, uh, pointing out the shortest course, the shortest paths in the course, which they do at the London and Berlin Marathon also. This helps the runners only run the minimum amount of distance, keeping to every perfect and least mark of distance. Some of you may not understand what I'm on about here if you're not runners yourselves, and you may have clicked on this video just to see the athlete crawl over the line. So let's get straight to that part as it's coming up now in about the next three or four minutes. Here's a helicopter showing the eerie leader. He is really, really pushing hard here, running against the flow of traffic, but don't worry, the road's been closed. Do not worry. And right now we have two hours and five minutes on the clock. I was starting to think that maybe the Ethiopian leading was going to collapse or he was going to fall over at the finish line, but it didn't happen. Instead, something else happened. So right now, Eri of Ethiopia hasn't got long left. I noticed he was really starting to tire. His arms were driving hard. His form had changed initially from the beginning and he was really gritting his teeth here. You can show him, you can see him showing his teeth, which is a sign that the athletes are in a whole world of pain. He's got around 400 meters left to run, or just under that, sorry. He's actually sped up over the last mile or so getting him down to a low 209 predicted finish time is he comes around the bend here the supporters the kenyan flag well eerie won't be happy to see that as that's not his flag he's actually ethiopian and he's coming in now for the win he's looking strong i can't see him collapsing although his legs do look extremely heavy he looks like uh, he really is hitting the wall but thankfully he is able to hold it together as he now comes in for these final few hundred meters here the crowd are giving energy to the runners by clapping cheering and shouting them on because now eerie realizes that he has won the prize money I'll be going over what Eerie won in terms of prize money in a few minutes if you stay tuned till the end of this video. Right now, let's get to the point you were all waiting for. Here we have first, then we have second in the background. Who is going to collapse and who is going to show that they have hit the wall? Eerie coming in for a winning time of 209.44 unofficial. Watch this, guys. It wasn't Eerie that collapsed, although he was exhausted. It was the second place Kenyan runner. Look at this as the cameras pan back to second place. And I couldn't believe what happened. His legs were tiring so bad. His body was shutting down and he couldn't do anything. This is hitting the wall. And unfortunately, his body became unresponsive, resulting in him losing out on second place, I believe. No, he didn't actually. He crawled over and got second place by the power and determination of his own mind. That was phenomenal. I couldn't believe that this Kenyan collapsed over the last five meters. It really was kind of heartbreaking to see how much he pushed his body to the end of this race. This can happen for many reasons, from low blood sugar to chronic fatigue and exhaustion, low blood pressure and many other reasons. When you push your body this hard, this is a scary thing to happen to you as your body becomes unresponsive. Can you imagine? Just take a second right now where you're sat in the world. Imagine telling your arm to move, but it doesn't. That's what it's like when you hit the wall like these elite runners do. His body stopped working and it collapsed to the floor, so he had no choice but to crawl for the rest of the meters. It's a scary thing that I have had happen to me once before, and I thought I was going to die. It's very, very scary. You kind of just become so determined at that point that if you can crawl over the finish line, then you do. So guys, let's take a look at the results for this marathon race. I have to say that I was very, very surprised with how dominant the Kenyans were. However, the winner of this race was Ethiopian. The next runners were all Kenyan. So here we have Eri in first, 209.44. Then we have Konyuga in second with 210.16. Then we have Koech in third with 210.19. And then we have Kiprotic of Kenya with 211.11. You know, guys, Sodst surprised me. He came fifth, which meant he actually overtook some of the uh, Africans that were leading. He ran a time of... 
2 hours and 13 minutes and 37 seconds. After this, there was a massive gap from 5th to 6th. You know, uh, I can't believe that. That's uh, 11 minutes, basically, between 5th to 6th. So weird, very, very weird. So here is the prize money uh, for the year and also the uh, exact amount. We have um, 2013 was $23,000. And uh, there you have the totals in the right hand column showing what they won. I don't know where I got this from, but uh, I, I think that this is the official numbers. And usually in these marathon races, they will give bonuses or when you run faster, uh, like it says here, race time bonuses. And they will also offer bonuses if you want a world record. So guys, we only have three days until the London Marathon. Make sure you hit subscribe to watch that video. And also consider subscribing if you're not already to stay up to date with all of the latest races. Please leave a like before you go and I'll catch you in tomorrow evening's video.